listen to this turbo. I just love it so much. I, I just can't stop doing this. That was kind of like full throttle. That, that sounded good. It's kind of puffing. And I mean, like I'm seeing a lot of fluid or water or, co or condensation on the floor. Now. How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video. And it's a good day because the Honda should be back up and running today. I know it uh, looks like we got a lot of work to do, but I mean, I pulled it in about two and a half hours. So let's see how fast I can put it back together. The motor is back and we did not damage it. If you didn't see the last video with the Honda, we took it to dyno and we had a low oil pressure light come on. We thought it might've been a sensor. We thought it might've just been the gauges maybe, just something misreading. It turns out we did have low oil pressure, but like barely. It was flickering on and off, so it wasn't like a constant low oil pressure. It was just passively flickering on and off. We weren't able to adjust the cam timing, so we didn't really get any full dyno runs. And to be fair, we thought we destroyed the motor, but after taking the motor apart with my boy, we inspected everything, and there is not a single wear mark on any bearing, any camshaft, no nothing, no damage, period. So we got insanely lucky. Now you might be asking Drew, so where did the metal come from that we saw? And I found the culprit. Not only was this one part restricting my oil flow, pretty much because I plumbed it wrong, but also this is where the metal was coming from. And let me show you guys. So here's the culprit right here. Now you might be saying, Drew, what do you mean? Where'd the metal come from? It looks fine. There we go, right there. The center locking nut that they send you is either too small or just it just doesn't work for this thing properly to where the edges of the nut itself or bolt however you want to call it they actually dig into this and you can see burrs actually still hanging on just from it being scraped away so not only was this the reason for the low oil pressure but this is where all of the metal came from as well because typically when a motor gets low oil pressure and you start wearing through metals your oil looks glittery um, and, and it's a really fine metal that you find you don't find burrs and we're finding legitimate burrs like this you can still see them in the sandwich plate adapter we're finding legitimate burrs like that and they were only in the oil filter as well we didn't see any in the head we didn't see any in the pan we did see paint flaking off of the pan and i have a photo of that but there was no metal down there just silicone and paint flaking off so we're not going to run this sandwich plate adapter because uh, we're just we're not going to risk it with it anymore. I bought an actual tap that taps off of the oil pressure sensor port. And so we're going to still have the oil pressure sensor and then we will tap the feed off of that. And we'll just take the, the little bung or port off of this thing and we'll be good to go. But uh, we'll do that towards the end. We have to take off the motor stand mount and then put on the clutch and put on the trance and drop her back in. But uh, on top of that, I'm rerouting a few things. I didn't like how my brake booster was routed before. So we're rerouting that. We're gonna make sure we have plenty of protection around my harness where it gets close to the downpipe. Now that everything's out of the way, it'll be very easy to wrap that up real nice. And I, I really wanna double check that my V bands for my uh, turbo, my downpipe line up really correctly because they didn't seem to mesh too good before, but I'm gonna actually support the downpipe and the exhaust with a jack. That way everything just meshes perfectly. I'm not fighting with gravity. So I'm not gonna record this whole process. I need to change my clothes anyways because I'm not in working clothes, but I'm not gonna record everything. I'm gonna just try to slap this together as fast as possible because today we're gonna try to drive it and possibly go get alignment because the alignment is shot on this thing. Overall though, it seems like we got very lucky this time around. If I saw any signs of wear or anything that looked like it was gonna be a problem on dyno, I would not be running this motor, but we cleaned everything. We didn't see any metal anywhere on the motor. Any of the little VTEC screens we pulled out, we didn't see any signs of nothing throughout the whole motor. So like I said, we dodged a bullet. A lot of people were saying I'm really bad at building motors. I didn't build the motor. I just slapped it in and I just put on one part incorrectly. And again, I'll take responsibility for it. I'm not familiar with this type of sandwich plate adapter. I've ran multiple sandwich plate adapters in the past, never gave me an issue, never even thought about this potentially being an issue just because it didn't seem possible, but it makes sense. So anyways, let me get changed and then I will start slapping this bad boy back together. In the meantime, how about you guys watch this race with my Mustang and my boys RSV4. I took the hit because I didn't think I was gonna hook, but check it out, a chase is a race, right? <laughs> And there 
there we go. I took a break for a while, but she is done. Feel, check. Intake, check. Liquids, fluids, check. Exhaust, check. Um, vacuum lines all plumbed, check. The only thing I haven't done is the strut tower brace and wired in the boost controller, but I'm saving that for my tuner anyways. Um, so yeah, I think we can go ahead and start it. Let me just open up the garage and uh, I think we can I think we can start it. I will crank it to allow the pressure to build first. That way we get oil everywhere and make sure that we're good and I can also check for leaks. Um, and then we'll start it. I'm just gonna do one quick one over on everything. Make sure everything looks good and uh, yeah, we'll start it. Here we go guys. First start up. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Let's hear it. Ooh. No oil pressure light, no check engine. We got the brake and the, the seat belt light. Nice. We got it plugged in as well so we can look at everything, but uh, yeah, no, she is, she's purring real nice. I'm gonna call Danny and we'll, we'll get this set up so I can drive it. And then, uh, yeah, we have dyno on Wednesday. Alright, sweet. Well, that's good news. Yeah, that is great news. Alright, it's the next day. I pulled the Honda out. I got it running right now and I'm not gonna lie. I'm really nervous. I like this this wouldn't be my fault. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This wouldn't be my fault because I never touched this part. This means I would have just bought a motor with a bad part, and that is the head gasket. I noticed it the initial startup when we were taking it to Dino and I thought maybe it was just running really rich but it was kind of smoking out the back. Well, it's still smoking. Now there's two theories. One, it is a blown head gasket, in which case I just have insanely bad luck, the worst luck possible when it comes to these goddamn Hondas. That's possibility number one. Everything I've seen so far doesn't point that direction besides the smoke. Like my coolant isn't going down. Um, we don't have any milky oil. We don't have any milky coolant. We don't have any of that. So that's, that's pointing me not in that direction. However, we still have the smoke and I'll show you that in a second. What it could be is uh, residue or leftover oil from the blown motor in the exhaust, which is highly likely. And when we stripped the block, we had the engine on the engine stand upside down and my boy said the cylinders literally like pooled with oil. And he said that that's gonna take a minute to burn out because that's gonna get into the cylinders. Uh, so it is gonna smoke, so he claims. However, let me show you guys the smoke and see what you guys think. So this is the smoke. Again, it's not really tuned, but I mean, it is, it's kind of puffing. And I mean, like I'm seeing a lot of fluid or water or, or condensation on the floor. Now I did just start the car, um, but it, that seems, that seems like a lot of smoke. But I don't know, we're gonna take it to the alignment right now. I've checked my coolant, I've let it run. Um, and we don't have like bubbles in the radiator or anything like that. Usually when you have a blown head gasket and it's leaking coolant, you would see pressure from the uh, combustion chamber pushing into the radiator and you would see bubbles or something. It, it looks like normal, it looks like normal flow to me. The coolant, I just used distilled water. It still looks very clean. I could probably drink out of it. So I'm praying that it's not. And I think we just need to drive the car, but there's only one way to know. So we're gonna go get an alignment and then I'm gonna go get a haircut. And maybe after all that driving, it'll be good. I am however gonna take this because if it is, I'm gonna need more water. Okay, so I'm gonna roll up the windows here. Ugh. The struggles. Anyways, we're driving. Check engine lights on, that's weird. Don't know what that's about. Um, it's still smoking a lot, which makes me nervous. I have uh, my computer right here though, so I can check on the temperatures because I want like an actual readout. So everything looks fine. We're just smoking, you know? But, I mean, we're gonna drive it. We're gonna see what happens. Hopefully it stops smoking. <laughs> Man, it sounds fucking sick, dude. Oh my God, that sounds hard as shit. Oh my God. He said 
right now, it's probably making like 250. And it feels peppy as fuck. I'm smelling like a burning oil smell, but I also touched a lot of everything underneath the hood, so I'm sure that's just natural stuff burning off. I'm gonna crack the, the sunroof though. Oh. The turbo sounds fucking sick. thing is, is fucking fun already it's fun it's gonna hopefully if it makes it to dyno make 200 more horsepower hey maybe maybe drew's luck is finally turning around maybe drew doesn't have the the most unlucky civic the cursed eg maybe he doesn't have that <laughs> dude it sounds so cool I'm in fourth or six, my bad. I'm in six and I mean, I'm at 3000 RPM, but I mean, it, it spools up pretty quick. I'm, I'm not really getting on it. I'm just giving it enough gas to get it to, to spool, but it sounds pretty sick. <laughs> and it sounds so good. Let's see if I see any smoke. I'm not seeing nothing. Yeah, I'm not seeing any more smoke, so might have got lucky. Let's listen to that turbo a little bit more. <laughs> sounds so good. Oh, I'm so happy with how it sounds. I love how low key this car is. Like the the intercooler's pretty low key. The the exhaust is low key. I don't have a hood exit. The exterior looks low key. But this thing is a little ripper right now. Oh, damn, she gets up. Okay. She gets up and goes. I haven't wide open throttle this whole ride, by the way. So everything you're seeing is like partial. Listen to this turbo. I just love it so much. I, I just can't stop doing this. That was kind of like full throttle. That, that sounded good. You know why I think I'm gonna love my Honda a lot? I know this is a very far-fetched idea, but it, when I play Call of Duty, which is a lot, I love using stupid guns. Like guns that when people die from them, they're like, how the fuck did I die from this idiot using this shit? That's what I like doing. So if I had a car or I'm gapping people and they're like, how the fuck did I lose to this idiot in a Honda? I think I'm gonna like this car a lot. Coolant temperatures, 194. And I know it's not like a, a stuck sensor or something cause like the point whatever keeps changing like 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.7, but still chilling around 194. So good stuff. All right, we just got back from the barber shop. My first ever lineup. This is a historic moment for me. Um, so please be nice to me. The Honda, however, another historic moment for me. It's good. It is. It seems to be good. I've been driving it around town. I've been driving it around. It's not smoking or anything. At least it doesn't seem to be. Um, it's running great. It's. It feels great in power. It, it, it's. It's. It's good. I think it's good. So tomorrow morning, I will take it to Dino and I'll have Danny work his magic with it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna stick around the whole time because tomorrow is Valentine's Day and I gotta do some shopping, some last minute shopping. Um, so I'll probably drop it off and I'll come towards the end when he's doing his last final like power pulls. And then uh, we'll just have to see probably Thursday how she is. Cause I don't think the missus is gonna wanna go cruise around town in the Honda. I just, I don't think this is the car to do that in. Um, but anyways, fun day. So far a success. I will take it home, park it, check all the fluids, check everything, and hopefully we're good to go. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. A much better video in my opinion than watching me tear it apart for like the sixth time. So uh, super happy with it, seems really good. Thank you to Jack Spaney Racing for the turbo kit, eFab for the fab work, and Danny for the upcoming tune. Also a big shout out to my boy Andy who not only did the alignment but helped me tear down the motor and uh, inspect everything. Honestly, without such a solid friend group, uh, this Honda would not be where it's at right now. So just a big shout out to everyone that's helped me. You guys know who you are. Thank you so much.
Now let's see what this puppy can do. I'll link all of their stuff down below so you guys can check them out if you're looking for any of those types of things. Anyways, thank you, subscribe, and until next video, peace.